Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Good morning and welcome to Sunday School again. And I want to thank everyone that, is, that has been plugging in for, for this year. This has been a very different year uh, during this pandemic. And many of you had to get familiar with the, the media outlets, Facebook and YouTube, those that really, really didn't spend a lot of time on that. That was a little bit of a learning curve. And, but you made the, uh, you adapted and made the changes. And so we appreciate that. And we plan to go into the regular Sunday School uh, on location uh, in September. And uh, next Sunday is the last lesson in this book. Uh, so those that, are not, that have not already brought your $15 for your annual books, if you would bring that today. And, uh, and also, if, I won't be there, but if you give it to uh, uh, Deacon Charles Baker or Sister Angeline, one of those two, uh, and I could get it from them, I would greatly appreciate that. And I get it when we come on uh, next, uh, next Sunday. Also, next Sunday is the, as I mentioned, the last lesson. So all, all the books will be with us. We'll have those next Sunday to give them out to everyone that has already paid and those that have uh, will bring your, your, your funds on at that time as well. $15, the same price for the big books and for the, the hard copy, which is the majority got the hard copy. We had about 11 to get the big, the big uh, print book. So they're all in. The last box just came in. So we're looking forward to having another very good Sunday school year. For those that are guests and listening in, my name is Ricky Pitts and I'll be your Sunday school teacher for today. I'm teaching on behalf of True Deliverance Holiness Church where Bishop Nolan T. Torbert is the pastor, founder and overseer. And so we, uh, we hope that you can take some good notes. We hope you'll plug in again for the coming year, 2021 and 22. And we're looking to get a lot of information uh, during the upcoming year as well. So let's jump right in to our lesson. It's, the lesson is a conquering faith. And it's coming from 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, then verses 13 through 17. The lesson aims is a tale how to recognize the spirit of God and define the differing senses and references of the word spirit, large S, and spirit, small s. Then list three ways he or she can better model God's love. Then a lesson has an outline, uh, three outlines, the condition, uh, verses two and three, the encouragement, 13 to 17, and the faith, four and five. So let's, uh, let's get right into the condition. Hereby know ye the spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Let's get into a little commentary here on, on these couple of verses here. Until the temple destructions in a, destruction in AD 70, Animal sacrifices were sacrificed in the temple on the Day of Atonement. And this reminded the Jews that the shedding of blood was necessary to atone, to get forgiven, to have remission, uh, to, have re to be reconnected 
to God as a result of their sins. Read about that in Hebrews, and it's in your commentary, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 22. But these, these animal sacrifices pointed to something bigger and something a whole lot better that was going to take, the place, take place one time, and there would be no more need for all the animals and the calves and the doves and the, the, the cattle and, and so on and so forth. That was going to be Jesus, where he was going to offer himself as a ransom for many. He was going to shed his blood on Calvary Cross for the sins of the entire world. And you read about that in Matthew 26, verse 28. Now, now Jesus then had to come in the flesh. And if he didn't come in the flesh, he wouldn't have obviously a body to sacrifice, nor would he have blood to shed. So Jesus then was fully God, and Jesus was fully man. And you read about that in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And Jesus also teaches us, he teaches us, or John rather, how to identify false prophets. Because there are many false prophets in, in prophets in the world today where they were then, and there are many false prophets in the world today. Every spirit, is what John said, that confesses that Jesus Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, is come in the flesh is of God. So then this test, if you will, complements the words that Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 17. I'd like you to read that. And also verses chapter 24, verses 23 through 26, regarding the need. And there's a real need to identify false prophets. Now, in the third verse, we also see the word antichrist. And it, that word occurs four times in the New Testament, and they occur only in John's letters. And then we see the word spirit here. Uh, this word spirit refers to those who claim to have, to have the inside scoop, to have the inside track on divine communication. I know what he said. I know when he's, why he said it. I know, what he's gonna, I know what's going to happen in the next few days they, I, because I have a direct connection. I have an inside track. And you read about that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 2. Now, the spirit that, that, that was at work in John's time, that, that spirit of the Antichrist that was prevalent in John's time, that same Antichrist spirit is working in the church today, around the world today. But what we want to really hone in on, or really zero in on, is how, how John used the, word, the words, the world, or the term, the world. Half of that term, the world, uh, appears in John's letters, in John's book. Now, John's book, the book of John, is about 14% of the New Testament. So what John had to say was very relevant. And John had a very uh, direct connection to God because John was a tunnel vision type prophet. And he preached the word of God just like the word of God was inspired uh, to him to preach. And the world to John usually referred to humanity. Well, not only humanity, but sinful humanity. And that sinful, sinful humanity who really don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, who really hasn't accepted that Jesus was able to come and die. One man died for the sin of the whole world. They were opposed to God. And, and, this, is, and this is the world that strayed, that word that strayed from the Lord. Why, how, come, how did they stray from the Lord? Because their deeds that these were evil. You know, you know the tree by the fruit that it bears. And, and the, the world, in John's sense, they, they really loved darkness more than they loved light. They would rather have darkness than have light. You read about that in St. John chapter 3, verses, verses 19. Now, let's cross over to the encouragement. And I'm going to try to stick with these notes right here as, as much as I can as well. But uh, let's read 13 through 17. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he had given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world, not just of, 
uh, that, that sector, not just of the Jews, but of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, the word says, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Now, now we're going to have to go a little deeper on that because if you just read that from just that, that one verse, you'll think this is kind of easy. Verse 16, and we, and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So now we see that God gives us what? His spirit. And, and, and we give God what? Ourselves. So he gives us his spirit and we give him us. We, we, we dwell in him. And the Acts 17 and 28 says this, in him we live and move and have our being. So then when we are, when we are guided, by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, we produce the fruit of the Spirit. Let me say that again. When we are guided by the Spirit, we produce the fruit of the Spirit. And I'd like you to go back and read, if you've not already read it, as according to the commentary, Galatians 5, uh, verses 22 through 26, Matthew 7, verses 15 through 20. Also, John had been, John realized that his, his time was coming to an end. John had been on the battlefield for the Lord for a long time. And he knew that he knew that his day was almost done. And so he felt then compelled to testify about what the Lord has, has done for him and what he's also was doing to testify about what they should do to be careful and to watchful on his way to the promised land. And his promised land was going to be an eternal home, a home that we've talked about in previous lessons a home where there's no more pain and persecution over there, no more trying to convince people that God is God and that God is eternal, God is supreme, no more trying to build a case and, and make references from the Old and New Testament, no more trying to say that he really, he's going to a place where everybody knows who God is and there's no more shame, there's no more struggle is what John is about to leave this earth and go to his eternal home. So John's going to testify just one more time. And there was nothing really accidental or incidental about the mission of Jesus that John talked about. Jesus was sent to save. And to John, this was a very, very important fact. And to John, this was the main thing to talk about. He was sent to, to save sinners, to die for the world. And John proclaimed that message all of his days until his dying day. He made that very clear. So the question then becomes, how do I know that I'm saved? How do I know that I'm born again and I'm fire baptized and my name is written down in glory? Even though the confession that Jesus is the son of God does reflect belief, John ain't saying that that's going to be the whole plan. Of, that's, the whole, that's the whole deal. John ain't saying that's the whole plan of salvation because even demons can do that. Demons even believe and they tremble. I want you to read Matthew 8, 29, 1 John 2 and 5 and 6, and James 2 and 19. So John is talking about what? Embracing that Jesus, or embracing Jesus as the authoritative Lord of our life. He's in charge. He's in command. He is the, the, the commanding officer. And we, we submit, we're subordinate to what Jesus has to say. Confessing Jesus involves following him in a trusting relationship of what? Faith and also of service. So confession then is foundational. But there are other things that have to follow. Like Acts 2.38, when Peter told them, y'all got to repent. What else, Peter? Be baptized. What else, Peter? In the name of Jesus. Why? For the remission of your sin. But what's going to happen? That you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, what's going to be the result? What a promise. It's for you, it's for your children, it's for many as it's for all, as many as the Lord I got shall call. You got to have it because what it does, it gives you that dunamis. 
It gives you the ability to do things that you cannot do on your own. The lesson has a very beautiful picture in it. It talks about show faith with your love. So faith then has to be seen. And in faith then is love. Love is faith. It is a package deal. So then the verse in verse 16, we see a description of relationship. And when we understand and accept God's love, a relationship then of loving trust is developed. So much so that John says, we live in God. What else, John? And he lives in us. You see, love for Jesus is not based on emotion. Oh, I just, oh, no, no, no. It's based on commitment. And an indication that this commitment is really real is how we love our Christian brothers. I know some of our Christian brothers make that, make that a little bit hard, you know, but we, it's how we love our Christian brothers. So a person then can't love God cannot love God without loving the family of God. And when we, when we understand, not only just understand, but also receive the love of God, it makes, it, it, it makes us into persons of people of love. When we understand it and we receive it, we're transformed to people of love. So Christians then, when we're born again and fire baptized, we got Jesus on our mind. We live in the song we're talking about. Christians don't have anything to worry about the day of judgment. And we can have what? Confidence in this fact that, that as we experience the love of God, this is a daily journey. This is a daily walk. As we experience the love of God and express that love to others, we get better and better and being able to deal with people of that, that that's very difficult, but that are that that are our Christian brothers and sisters. Now let's go into the third portion. It talks about the faith, verse five and six. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he? That's the question. That overcometh the world. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. You see, the Christian life begins and the Christian life ends with faith. If anyone comes to God, he got to believe that God is. And God is, he got to have faith. He got to believe that God is. And he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Without that faith, it's impossible to please God. So, but faith is more than, and we, 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 we studied this some, some months ago, faith is more than intellectual assent. You know, I know that's, I know that's right. Oh, that's just the truth. You see, people that, have, that, that, that only has this intellectual experience, they know all the, the right words to say. They know how to jump. They know how to shout. They know how to deep my teeth, that, speak in some kind of tongue. I mean, they can make it up, boy. I mean, just make it up, show enough. They, they, they know all the right words, but they don't bag up the words with actions that overcome it, the world. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So, so they don't, they don't, you don't see that they really believe. You understand that intellectually they've assented to the fact and they know what to say. They know how to quote the scriptures, but they don't. They can't overcome the world, so that they, they haven't mixed it with faith. The faithful mind understands the truth. The faithful heart desires the truth, and the faithful will acts on the truth. And John breaks down that faith as being born of God. What do you mean, John? Got a faithful mind that understands, a faithful heart that desires, and a faithful will that takes action. You've been born again. And I'd like you to read 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, and verse 18 and 19. So then to overcome, listen to this, to overcome is to actively work against the flawed principles that the world lives by. It is a, it is a, 
It is on purpose. It is intentional. I want you to read Colossians chapter 2 and 8, and then also verses 20 through 23, great St. Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23, and Romans chapter 1, verses 29 through 31. These are folks in that Romans chapter 1, boy, look at him. Anyway, you read it. So, so we can sum this whole thing up by saying this. The values, the value systems of the world is diametrically opposed to the word of God. I mean diametrically, I mean completely, dramatically opposed to what the word of God says. And they're calling right wrong and wrong right. And uh and they and they build that case of calling right wrong and wrong right. Then we see the designation son of God. And that refers to the only begotten status of Jesus in relation to our heavenly father. I want you to read this in John 1, 14, 18, then chapter three and verse 16 and verse 18. But now the first century Romans, the Romans of that time, they considered that Emperor Augustus and other emperors were sons of a God. So they, 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 they didn't believe, they really came against Jesus for saying that he was the only begotten son of God. Even, even his kinfolks, even the folks that were in his same nationality, even the leaders of the day, the Jewish leaders, didn't like that because Jesus claimed to be the only begotten son of God. And they demanded that he should die because they thought that was blasphemy. And you read that in Matthew chapter 26, verse 62 through 66, and John chapter 10, verses 31 through 36. So this physical world then that we live in, this physical world that's only a shadow of the spiritual world, the, the spirit is more real than the, the physical. This physical world then has an unholy value system that does not mimic or shadow what's in glory because they've gotten away from what's in glory and they're doing what they want to do. But this world is going to pass away. But the person who obeys God, listen to this, is going to live forever. This old world is not our home. We're just pilgrims. We're passing through. But we must believe in and act upon the truth about Jesus in order to share in that victory over in glory land. I want you to read 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, Revelation 3 and 5, 12 and 21. We have an eternal, now you know what class, I'm gonna say this as we get ready to bring this lesson to a close here. We have, we got something to look forward to. We got something to look forward to when this life down here no, is over. Now, we don't know when this life down here is over. We don't know when the Lord is coming back. We don't know when you going to get out of here for the last time. We, we, nobody knows. But one thing for sure we do know that while we're here, we need to occupy until he comes. We need, we need to ask the Lord to help us to walk worthy of the vocation where with we are called. Help us, Lord, to, to, to represent you well in the kingdom. Help us, Lord, to accept the fact that you did come you did die, you were buried, you were rose, you rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and you did die for the sins of the whole world. One man did what, what nobody else could do. You were the sinless lamb, the flawless lamb of God. You are fully God and fully man. You're God almighty. You were God in creation, the son in redemption, and the Holy Ghost in the church today. You're Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end, first and the last. Ain't nobody like you. You're omnipresent, omniscience. El Shaddai, you're God, you, you, and you're supreme, and ain't nobody like you, and we got to lean and depend on you, and if we do, if we do, we're going to get to, we're going to go to a place when it's all over down here. We're going to a place, y'all know how, y'all, you've heard about heaven. I don't have to get tell you about heaven. You've heard about heaven, but God can give us some heaven on earth if we accept his righteousness. If we accept his righteousness, we're going to walk in that righteousness. We in him and him in us. Think about that for a moment. God Almighty, the, the, the creator of the universe, the cosmos, everything we see and don't see, that God dwells inside of us. That's a big deal. And, and see, and listen, listen, class, we gotta we got to ask the Lord to help us to walk in that realization, to put on the coat of that knowledge, to put on the clothing of that understanding. 
to open up our understanding and then ask them to, to, to acknowledge him in all our ways and ask them to direct our path. And Lord, should I say this? Lord, should I do that? Lord, what are the ramifications if I do it this way? Because in him is truth. In him is life. In him is light. So he is the illumination of everything in our situation. He brings clarity. He brings understanding. He gives direction. He is revelation. He's not just information. He's not just a cognitive lesson that you've learned. What's step one? What's step two? What's, no, no. He is revelation. He's God. And that God lives and moves and resides inside of us. And that's a big deal. And you know what? Most of us don't realize how big a deal that is. See, class, this is why it's important that we get into the word of God and we stay there and we stay there anyhow. Get into the word of God and abide there and abide there anyhow. Regardless of what comes or what goes, let's make it up. Let's make it up in our mind that we have decided to make Jesus our choice. Because one day, just like John, the days down here are going to be over. And you're going to testify for the last time and let them know for the last time about what God has done for you and what he wants you to do for him and that he wants to dwell in you and that you have to dwell in him. Listen, y'all enjoy the rest of the, your, your weekend. Enjoy church today. And look, we look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. The next Sunday lesson, you don't want to miss it. You know why you don't want to miss it? We're talking about that eternal hope. We're talking about that place over yonder. And so we're coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Y'all plug in next Sunday. We'll look forward to seeing you. The Lord say the same at that time. Have a great rest of the weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Y'all take care.